In this video, I've compiled a list of 13 tips to help you out in Tarkov. We'll take a quick look at sound, some more stats life hacks, fucking the game just a tiny bit in our favor, and much more. What's up everyone? My name is Lies, and let's get right to it. The sound and escape from Tarkov can be difficult to master, and while I plan to make a full video about it eventually, I've got some quick tips for you here. Because directional audio can be difficult to judge. If you are unsure whether the sounds are coming from above or below you, proning can sometimes help you determine where your enemy is. Also, you know how your PMC is grunting when you're running with a blacked out limb or a fracture? Well, it's all client side, so even though it's making a lot of noise, that's all in your head actually. The same goes for that clicking sound when you're packing a magazine, your enemies can't hear that either. Finally, and this one goes without saying but wear a headset please in game of course just choose anyone you like and stick with it that will serve you well for a long time however keep in mind that sound in tarkov can be unreliable at times particularly inside buildings and near stairwells in general don't rely too heavily on sounds because sometimes someone can get really close to you without making any noise so play accordingly do you melee people a lot Nah, me neither. That is one of the reasons why you shouldn't be running around with a melee weapon in your inventory. This is especially important at low levels when every gram counts. It's not much, but having your melee slot free will allow you to carry out a little more weight when you extract or use the slot to secure a red rebel or any other type of melee weapon you want. With the impending wipe, we'll be starting from scratch, including our skills. When you enter a raid, all of your skills will have a modifier of 129% until you earn your first skill point for that raid. We can take advantage of this, because if we start sprinting, the modifier will not wear off until we stop sprinting again, even if we've gained a full skill point. In the long run, sprinting out your stamina bar first thing every raid will help you level up that endurance a lot faster. The same thing holds true for strength, so as soon as you hit overweight during a raid, save up a full stamina bar and sprint for the full duration if possible. If you use stims like SJ6 and Meldenin, you will be able to sprint for a lot longer before running out of stamina, granting you a lot more XP with the modifier. Furthermore, you should prioritize leveling up your hideout so you can activate the air filter and the library, which will help you level up your skills even faster. Do you have trouble finding a magazine that fits to your gun? Maybe a sight? grip or a handguard? I've got the solution right here, because linked search is your friend. I use this feature all the time. It will sort flee into items that can only be used with the item that you did the linked search for. It can really make life easier when looking for a magazine or something that fits your gun. If you start taking fire when you are moving around and can't immediately get behind cover or even tell where the shots are coming from, it can sometimes save your life to fire just 5 to 10 bullets in the direction you think your enemy is and then keep sprinting away. This is a situational tip and there is times where you just want to keep running of course. However, especially inexperienced players will be really scared when those bullets return and they will have no idea that you don't see them. So if they hear the bullets coming their way, they will definitely think twice before peeking again. Dead scats are useful because they give experience when you kill them and you can loot. Scats that are still alive, on the other hand, can actually be used as an alarm bell. That is, if you are going to be in the same area for a while, it may make sense to leave some scats alive. For example, if I am in dorms on customs and the scats are not a threat to me, I'll leave them wandering around over on the bus stop and in the dorms area too because they will alert me to any players who get nearby, giving me the advantage. Some game sounds, like packing a magazine, can be pretty loud. In the audio settings, reduce the interface volume. Personally, I have mine set to 20%, which makes sounds like packing a magazine much less annoying. Many of you may already be aware of this one, but it is far too useful for me not to mention. While looting containers, airdrops or stashes, you can actually lay down on the ground. All you have to do is hit your prone keybind as soon as you started looting. I'll hit them almost simultaneously and there we go, I'm looting a stash while proning on the ground. After hitting loot, I usually just spam my prone keybind. So recoil can also be pretty tricky in Tarkov because it's very situational if you want to be full autoing or just tapping at your target. If possible, I'll always have my gun set to full auto though, but if my target is more than around 50 meters away, I'll usually be tapping. However, full auto is insane at close quarter combat and close ranges. So that's why I always set it to full auto in case I all of a sudden run into someone when I'm moving around. On top of that, this mostly applies to meta builds. So early wipe is a completely different story. Your builds are usually going to be pretty crappy and they will have a lot of recoil. As a result, unless I'm in dorms or another area where close quarter combat is very likely, I use single fire much more when I'm low level and running poor builds. This one goes hand in hand with the previous one because since I use single fire a lot with bad guns early in the wipe, which weapon attachments are the best ones to use? In my opinion, it goes sights, 
tactical devices, and then fork grips slash muscle devices. And the sights are far ahead. It's not even close. A good scope can turn any gun that would otherwise be considered pretty bad into a decent sniper. Next, we have a tactical device such as the X400, which will help you a lot in close quarter combat. Just get used to toggling your lights on and off all the time so you are not constantly giving away your positioning by having your lights on. Also, don't forget to use the best possible ammunition that you can get your hands on. All right, link to this ammo sheet down in the comments. Some of you will already be aware of this, but for those who are not, this is going to be a game change. When you are in your inventory or stash, you can move items around by holding Ctrl or Alt and then clicking on that item. Alt plus click will equip the item if you have an available slot. This can be extremely useful if you quickly need to pick up a gun or a full loadout from a dead PMC during a raid for example. You can also use it in your stash to save time. However, nothing will happen when you Alt click if the equipment slot isn't empty. If you are in your stash or have a loot container open, you can also Ctrl click on items items which will cause them to jump into your inventory instantly. It also works the opposite way so you can quickly empty your bags using this method. These may appear simple but when used correctly they can mean the difference between winning or losing a fight and in general just saving a lot of time. This one doesn't really count as a tip of its own, but it's still worth mentioning. Do you see this button? This is the sorting table, an ever-expanding loot table where you can store your items while you are trying to make space in your stash. However, you must remove all of the items from the sorting table before you are able to leave the stash again. Alright, so you can drop your backpack silently if you do it while you are taking a painkiller. This is very useful because you'll often be popping a painkiller before fighting someone, so you might as well drop your backpack right away so you are able to move around more quickly. Simply press your drop backpack keybind after starting to take the painkiller, or you can also open up your inventory and hit discard item on your backpack, whatever you prefer. It even works if you are just taking a stim, so keep this one in mind. Dying in Tarkov can be frustrating, and I discovered that for me, the frustration is increased if I've just spent a long time putting together a loadout only to go in and then die again quickly. To counteract this, I'll use loadouts that I know are inexpensive and I can put together in just a minute or two. At level 1 traders, some of the guns to consider are the SKS, VPO 136, 209, 215 and shotguns of course. The VPO 215 Gono Stay is one of my favorites. You can get a cheap scope and mount from Jaeger who is also the one selling the weapon. Even though it's a bad scope, it's better than nothing. I usually end up using the VPO215 a lot during leveling because you can easily put on a better scope and the AP ammo is available at flea from level 15 making it super lethal. However, I'll also run with a pistol most of the time as well to give myself a better chance in close quarter combat. Then get yourself a headset, an armored rig or a chest armor and a helmet. At level 1, Papor, Skier and Rackman can help you out with these items. If you need, you can use linked search to quickly find the right magazines for your gun and ammunition as well. But even if it's quick to put together, it'll cost us a fortune if we keep dying all the time. A quick tip for that is to run factory scaffs every time on cooldown. They are so valuable and I regularly make between 100 and 115k in just a couple of minutes. Sometimes if I'm lazy, I'll even just do a run through and then vendor everything. This will also level up your fence reputation gradually, making you spawn with more and more valuable on your scaffs. With all of these tips out of the way, you're probably ready to learn more. So you can click here for more tips like this. Thank you for watching guys and take care. I'm running inside here. Okay, I'm going to go inside the stairwell. Let's see if there's any chats in here. Surprise, mother... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>